Welcome to this, a brief six month review of this. The OM Digital Solutions OM System OM1 branded Olympus still. It totally makes sense. It's a very catchy name. Good job. I've had the OM1 for pretty much exactly six months now. And overall, I like it. You can stop watching there if that's all you cared about. But I'm going to go into some of the issues and some of the things I like about the camera anyway, uh, in case you're either still waiting for your pre-order, which seems quite plausible, or if you're curious about buying this camera. I bought the OM1 as a system swap from the Canon 7D Mark II, because nothing in Canon's lineup was particularly exciting me. And I have quite specific needs for a camera system. I pretty much exclusively shoot small birds. That's pretty much all the wildlife we have here in Wales. And so I need my camera very specifically to work for that. This is something that the OM1 is particularly good at. I swapped because I saw a potential benefit in it that no one seems to discuss. Namely, that you have deeper depth of field. And many people see this as a disadvantage. And in fact, it is for many forms of photography. But for small birds, it's actually a benefit. If you're using a full frame camera and you are within three or four meters of a small bird, you need to step your aperture down to about f8 in order to get the entire bird in focus. This means that you're going up into higher ISO numbers and you're going to get noisier photos as a result of that. It also means that you lose the primary advantage that you have over the Micro Four Thirds system, which is better noise levels at equivalent ISO numbers, because you can't compare equivalent ISO numbers for small bird photography. On a full frame camera, I would be shooting at f8, but on the Micro Four Thirds camera, I may well be shooting at f4, which is quadruple the amount of light coming into the sensor, which means that you can use a lower ISO number for the same shutter speed. The benefit of this being that with this lens, the 300mm f4, I am shooting wide open pretty much always. I very, very rarely ever step down. The takeaway from this could be an example where I would be shooting at ISO 3200, but a full frame camera would be shooting at 12800. Yes, the full frame camera is going to be better at 12,800 than this camera is at 12,800. But when you compare 12,800 on a full frame camera to 3,200 on a micro four thirds camera, the difference is less noticeable. So it is a benefit, but it only applies in certain situations. It just so happens that for my use case with small birds, that this actually makes sense and is a bonus rather than a detriment to the micro four thirds system. So when I'm talking about noise levels on the OM-1, it's from a different standpoint to doing the same on full frame. One of the main cons to this camera is its color reproduction at high ISO numbers. When you're at 12,800 and not in perfect light, the colors get a bit weird. As an example, here is a photo that I took recently. This was taken around 9 a.m. on a sunny day and the sun had just clipped behind a cloud as I took this. Compare this photo to this one, which was taken minutes beforehand, and look at the color reproduction between these and how bizarre the high ISO one is. This is correctable. It's mostly a magenta color tinge to the shadows and the midtones, but you can't use the temperature slider to correct this. You need to do it in the shadow and mid-tone color correction tools. In terms of ergonomics, I think this camera is 50-50. It is not as ergonomic as a Canon camera. I don't think anything is. One of the best parts about this camera is the grip. It is a very, very good grip. I do not use straps. As you can see, I've taken the ridiculous split pins off of this camera. As a brief tangent, I hate the triangular split pins that come on cameras now. Canon do not use these. They have not used them ever, as far as I know. I have an old 400D sat in a bag downstairs that has rectangular strap brackets. Why do camera manufacturers continue to use stupid wiggly little split pins? For wildlife photography, they're bad because they make noise. For videography, they're bad because they make noise. They're weaker. 
I don't get it. In terms of the control system on the OM1, it is largely good, but with a few minor quibbles from me. These may just be me, but you may find them irritating too. So from the good, I do like the way it holds, and I do like the rear dials and the rear controls on the right hand side of the camera. I do rather like this whole section. These are nice to use. What I do not like is the menu button being over here, particularly because in order to get it, you have to go past the eye sensor. I do not like that, that is annoying. I also do not like the front dial. It doesn't work very well and it's poorly positioned. That's a notable disadvantage to this. I do like these buttons here, these function programmable buttons. I make a lot of use of these. They're very good. I do not like this set of buttons. It's on the wrong side. These are important functions for autofocus and for shooting modes like speeds, metering modes. This should be here. The mode dial is near useless. It should be over here. You need to change this much less than you need to change this. So this should be swapped, in my opinion. So I do find it kind of frustrating. It is not as well laid out and thought out as Canon, but it's usable and that's not a problem. I can use this without a grip, which is not what I was expecting. It's mostly due to the depth of the grip on this. It is very good, but I'm not using it without a grip out of choice. It is now six months since I placed a pre-order for a grip. I still do not have the grip. And this is a big disadvantage to swapping to this system right now. OM Digital Solutions shipping and manufacturing chain is bad, honestly. This is a major disadvantage to this camera system right now is actually getting hold of some of the gear. A lot of people didn't receive their own one for a long time. They're only just showing up in stock now and not just for pre-orders six months later. The grip, God knows where it is. It's a lump of plastic with some copper contacts in it that they charge you 300 pounds for the privilege of owning. It is really winding me up that I have two pre-orders with different companies. I've had one of them since launch and it is with Wex, the biggest company in the UK, and they still do not have enough of these grips. They barely get any shipments in. No one knows when they're coming. There is no information. It is really frustrating. I always use a grip with a camera. I like it for the balance and I need it for the battery life. It would make it a lot easier. I take portrait photos a lot and notably handheld and holding a camera like this with a longer lens on for a long period of time is a very good way of hurting your arm. It's not just the grip that they've had delivery issues with the free extra battery that I ordered with the camera took three months for me to receive. I ended up having to buy the dual battery charger, which was expensive just to get an extra battery. It is quite frustrating. It's also one of the reasons why I haven't waited for the rumored upcoming OM5 in order to buy that as a filming camera, because I do not believe that I'll be able to actually get the components that I need for it in any reasonable time frame. This isn't necessarily a negative of the camera, but of the camera system itself. It is something to keep in mind right now. In terms of camera performance, I'm extremely happy with the IM1. The speed at which it can take photographs is incredible. There is no competitor on the market that is as fast as this at the resolution that it can take photos right now. The autofocus is very quick too. I must admit I don't use the 120 frame a second mode very often. I have used it. Uh, I used it to photograph nut hatches returning to their nest. I'll put a photo up on the screen. The benefit of this for fast moving birds when you know they're going to be at a certain spot and you know that the lighting is staying consistent, it's very high. It's a very useful mode for that. But for most of the time when I'm shooting, I shoot on the 20 frames a second silent shutter mode. That's for just general photos and birds in flight. For me, this is the slow mode, but this is actually the highest speed that many competitor cameras can actually reach. So that's a testament to just how fast this camera really is. The 50 frames a second mode I use an awful lot with pro capture to capture birds taking off or moving and trying to capture action while it's happening as autofocus still works during that. In terms of autofocus, you can probably ignore the tracking mode. 
Unfortunately, you do have to use continuous AF plus tracking in video mode if you want object detection. I don't know why, there's no real explanation, it's a bit weird. When I'm taking video of the birds that I'm photographing, I typically tend to use manual focus a lot of the time, just because I do not find that it is very effective at keeping the focus on the birds. I could potentially also use an old-fashioned style grid arrangement to just focus on the right point. That would probably work better than relying on the tracking autofocus. It's just not very good. When taking stills though, you can just use continuous AF. You don't need to use tracking. The camera is very fast. When it's using object detection, it just keeps finding the bird. It keeps moving the autofocus. It is very good at keeping up with birds in flight. Panning shots with birds in flight works superbly. The ability for the camera to track subjects moving towards the frame is very good. It does work very well. I have quite a good success rate. On medium and larger birds in particular, it's very effective. Small birds, it's difficult, they move so fast. The water resistance of the OM-1 is fantastic. I actually trust it. Uh, I buy only weather-sealed cameras and only weather-sealed lenses because I live in Wales. It has rained all of the past two weeks. In terms of battery life, I think that the OM-1 is about average, really. It's not great. I do get through batteries quite fast. I, on average, use a single battery up in about two hours of wildlife photography, but I am using things like Pro Capture Mode a lot. I shoot a lot of photographs. In terms of things I'd like to see brought to the OM-1 or improved on the OM-1, there are a few. Number one, I would really like the grip. Number two, I would like to see improvements to the autofocus in terms of video. I would like the option to not use continuous AF plus tracking for objects. I would like to just be able to use continuous AF. It's weird that it's different from the photo mode. I'm sure there's a reason behind it, but I would prefer not to have to use that. I'd like to see better color rendition in the high ISO raw files, but I suspect that that is a downside to the sensor rather than the color processing. And it's largely fixable in post using a combination of DxO Pure Raw and Lightroom. You can fix a lot of those problems. It's just a, a frustration that that's required. And I think for people who prefer to shoot JPEG or who aren't willing to go through that amount of hassle to process their raw files, it is a downside to the camera. If I had to pick again, would I still buy the OM-1 and buy into this Micro Four Third system? Uh, I believe I would. But it would have some competition that didn't exist when I did actually purchase this camera originally. Namely, the Fujifilm X-H2S and their new 600mm zoom lens. The new lens is not very bright at the 600mm end, but it hits a nice midpoint in terms of sensor size in that it's larger than Micro Four Thirds, but it's smaller than full frame. I think the features that Fuji have been bringing to their system are very good. Uh, the cameras are nice to use. I think there are some notable advantages there. I would be interested to try them out side by side. In conclusion, I like the OM-1. I'm still pleased with my purchase. There are improvements I'd like to see, but I suspect that most of my complaints are really more around the, uh, the Micro Four Thirds system and its downsides than anything else. The stock situation and the delivery situation regarding the components and the camera system is frustrating and actually one of the major downsides to getting into this system right now. I believe you can now buy the own one from stock, which is good, but just be aware that things like batteries, remote releases, battery grips, and other things like that are still not often in stock. They're still on ridiculously long lead times, and that might frustrate you if you're moving over to this system. I like the performance of the camera, and it has improved my photography, and I'm getting more action shots than I ever did before with my previous setup. So overall, I am very happy with it, and I can't see myself moving away from it any time in the near future. I would be curious to see what comes out of some of the other manufacturers. Before I bought this camera, I was originally thinking of waiting for the Canon R7, and I'm glad I didn't. I don't think that camera does everything that I would need it to do. I think the OM-1 was actually the step up from the 70 Mark II that I needed.
If you already have an OM-1, then my biggest recommendations as to how you can improve the photos coming out of the camera right now are to change how you process photos. You can forget about OM Workspace, it does not work very well. I find that Lightroom has the best colour grading and shadow recovery in terms of its features available, but I would then pair that with DxO Pure Raw. This is not sponsored in any way, but it does notably improve the quality of the RAW files from this camera. I used it already in the past when I used a 7D Mark II, and it makes the high ISO files much more usable and much more flexible and fixable as you try and improve them from their base state. Thank you for watching. Please leave some comments down below if this was useful. I don't have many videos on this channel yet, but if you want to see the sorts of photos I take, there will be a playlist linked up here somewhere.